In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, and pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God of mercy, just forgive us our sins and bring us for the last thing. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. The Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm the foundation of your love. For the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of the Kings. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he came to the throne, and he reigned for three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan from Jerusalem. He did what is displeasing to the Lord just as his father had done. At that time, the troops of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched on Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon himself, came to attack the city while his troops were besieging him. Then Jehoiakim, king of Judah, surrendered to the king of Babylon. He, his mother, his officers, his nobles, and his eunuchs, and the king of Babylon took them prisoner. This was in the eighth year King Nebuchadnezzar. The latter carried off all the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace and broke up all the golden furnishings that Solomon, king of Israel, had made for the sanctuary of the Lord, as the Lord had foretold. He carried off all Jerusalem into exile. All the nobles and all the notables, ten thousands of these were exiled, with all the blacksmiths and metal workers. Only the poorest people in the country were left behind. He deported Jehoiakim to Babylon, as also the king's mother, his eunuchs, and the nobility of the country. They made the Lord leave Jerusalem for exile in Babylon. All men of distinction, 7,000 of them, the blacksmiths and metal workers, 1,000 of them, all of them, them, men capable of bearing arms, were led into exile in Babylon by the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon made Mazniah, Jehoiakim's uncle, king in succession to him and change his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, the nations have invaded your land. They have profaned your holy temple. They have made Jerusalem a heap of ruins. They have handed over the bodies of your servants as food to feed the birds of heaven and the flesh of the faithful to the beasts of the earth. They have poured out blood like water in Jerusalem, leaving no one to bury the dead. We have become the taunt of our neighbors, the mockery and scorn of those who surround us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Do not withhold the guilt of our fathers against us. Let your compassion hasten to meet us, for we are in the depths of distress. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. O God, our Savior, come to our help. Come for the sake of the glory of your name. O Lord, our God, forgive us our sins. Rescue us for the sake of your name. Rescue us, O Lord, for the glory of your name. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, It is not those who say to me, Lord, Lord, who will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the person who does the will of my Father in heaven. When the day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, work many miracles in your name? Then I shall tell them to their faces, I have never known you. Away from me, you evil men. Therefore, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on rock. Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew, and hurled themselves against that house, and it did not fall. It was founded on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a stupid man who built his house on sand. Rain came down, floods rose, gales blew, and it struck in that house, and it fell. And what a fall it had. Jesus had now finished what he wanted to say, and his teaching made a deep impression on the people, because he taught them with authority, and not like their own scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus concludes today the Sermon on the Mount, warning his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Saying those who listen to his words, meaning those who listen and carry out the entire Sermon on the Mount, will be like that one who built his house on rock. When the storm came, he remained firm. Jesus is asking us, his disciples, sisters and brothers, to be authentic. The evangelist Matthew writes that after Jesus finished his famous Sermon on the Mount, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not like the teachers of their own law. It seemed to be the venerable as the scribes themselves taught the people what is written in Moses and the law and the prophets. But Jesus, as the God and Lord of Moses himself, either added those things which appeared wanting in the law, or altered things as he preached to the people. As you read in Matthew, it was said of them of old, but I say this to you. When Jesus taught, he taught with power, and he confirmed this through the miracles that he worked, such that his hearers would even wonder, who is this, that even the devils obey him. Jesus also taught by example. As scripture says, not like the Pharisees, they see authenticity in Jesus. He himself did not live luxuriously. They say that he rose early every morning to pray. They say that he reached out to others even when he was tired. They saw him among tax collectors, women of ill repute, soldiers, Samaritans, and that made a deep impression on them. They saw in Jesus someone who did not simply preach, but who practiced what he preached. The people see that us. There was a California driver's license examiner who once had an experience with a teenager who had just driven an almost perfect test and the examiner said he made only one mistake when he stopped to let me out of the car. He breathed a sigh of relief and the boy exclaimed, I'm sure glad I don't have to do to drive like that every day. There is a danger in the spiritual life of becoming complacent, thinking that somehow we are all set, that we are ready and think therefore that we are better than others. That attitude leads to pride, self-righteousness, and arrogance. There was once a cashier at a grocery store who once wrote to advice columnists and landers to complain that she had seen people buy luxury food items like birthday cakes and bags of shrimp with their food stamps. The writer went on to say that she thought all those people on welfare who treated themselves to these non-essential things, these non-necessities, were lazy and wasteful, good-for-nothing people. A few weeks later, Landa's column was devoted entirely to people who had responded to the cashier. One woman wrote, I didn't buy a cake, but I did buy a big bag of shrimp with food stamps. My husband had been working at a plant for 15 years when it was shut down. The shrimp casserole I made was for our anniversary dinner, and it lasted three days. Another woman wrote, I am the woman who bought the cake and I paid for it with food stamps. I thought the cashier in the store would burn a hole through me 
with how she looked with her eyes at me. What she didn't know is that the cake was for my little girl's birthday. It would be her last. She has bone cancer and will probably be gone six to eight months. Jesus many times warned his disciples. He warns us, do not be self-righteous. Do not become like the Pharisees and scribes. In the movie, Crazy Rich Asians, there was a young woman, Rachel Chu, who meets the wealthy family of her boyfriend, Nick Young, in Singapore. The one who gives her the most difficulty, however, is his mother, who is the one who has a prayer group, reading the Bible, going to church, but is failing to be a true Christian to her. You know, this is why they often save us closer to church, further from God. When we are self-righteous, we imitate not Jesus, but the Pharisees, who are people who are always in the temple praising God, doing things to be seen. And Jesus likens to whitewashed sepulchres, clean on the outside, filthy inside. Other sisters and brothers, remember that we are all at different stages of the journey. Let's not think that we are ready to be canonized. Let's not give in to pride, self arrogance, and self righteousness. Let us not look down on others and be judgmental. Rather, let us strive to be better people, holier people, authentic people, humble people, followers of Jesus Christ, perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, remembering that Jesus said, and all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We stand as we bring before our Heavenly Father all the needs that we have. We pray for the Church throughout the world, for Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Jason, for all bishops, priests, and deacons. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We continue to pray for all frontline workers throughout the world during this time of the pandemic. We pray especially for all leaders, those involved in making decisions that, O oh Lord, you inspire them to make decisions that are in the best interests of their people for the health and protection of the ones that they serve. We pray especially in Jesus' name for an end to this pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. Obligations to the priesthood and to the religious life, especially to our farm-like way of life. We pray for our students, Marlon, Jonathan, and Greg, and Dave and David from our cluster. Lord, that they may be holy priests. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for the special intention of the Araho, Nanton, Lo and Tanchun, Bailey and Jimenez families, for Charles and Sarah as they prepare for their wedding, for breakthrough for Andrew, for healing for Laurentia Market, George Tanchu, Norma Ella, Della Marie, Laurentia Market, Lord Harris, Lord Gracious. We pray for the repose of the souls of all the recently deceased. We pray especially for Nicole and Chris Figuera, and for the comfort and consolation of their friends and families and co-workers. We pray especially for their four daughters. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Lisa O'Connor, Lord Harris, Lord Gracious, and for all the needs which we hold in the silence of all. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We unite these prayers to those of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Also pray in a special way for Zedan Gomez. Most blessings on him as he celebrates his great day today. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. Father, we ask that you hear these prayers which we make in Jesus' name. Change my heart, O Lord, 
make it ever true. Change my heart of oh, old. Oh. May I be like you. You are the potter. I am the clay. Hold me and make me. This is what I pray. Change my heart, O oh, Lord. Oh. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh Lord. May I be like you. Braces and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all that is holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant it cleansed by its actions, for you make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your worthy whom we made all things, whom he sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gain for your holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels and all the saints will declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given us. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and one small giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many, with the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Darren, Leon, Nicole, and Chris Figuera, Lisa O'Connor. 
and all those who have died as a result of corona, as well as those who have died from violence, or crime, or racial hatred. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on the soul, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be coerced to eternal life, and I praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We praise Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, it may be always free from sin, and saved from all distress, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sovereign. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
My God loves me, and I to love him too. He lived in my heart for my God. His gentle love, he stretches over the stone. Clouds threaten the making of Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask you of your mercy, O Lord at what we celebrate with constant devotion and be our sure pledge of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Continue to pray for an end to this pandemic as you pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the state of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God restrain him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked spirits who wander through the world, seeking the room souls. Amen. And as a reminder that we have Mass in the church tomorrow, and you can register for that online, or you can check the office and all the masses uh, for the week and on the weekend are available for registration in the office. Uh, thank you so much. And a reminder, we also have adoration all day tomorrow after the 7 a.m. mass until 5 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us. Do be safe out there. God bless you. Have a great day.